Welcome to Metaprogramming Club. Hi, welcome back. My name is Dave Thomas, also known as Seventh Shot Nine. Today's going to be another tech video. This time we're going to be continuing into a new series on metaprogramming. If you remember in my F Sharp Language Essentials series, we've done a video on an introduction to metaprogramming with F Sharp, and we've done an episode that covered all the different metaprogramming um, facilities that were available with F Sharp. Today, we're going to be delving back into quotations um, because it was quite clear that there was a lot more to explore in that area. If you're kind of new to F Sharp, it's um, Quotations is one of those areas where it's quite difficult to get a grasp for where they can be used and exactly how they're useful in the real world. So I'm going to attempt to delve into this area in a lot more detail. The first rule of Metaprogramming Club is you do not talk about Metaprogramming Club. I thought it might be useful to show some of the difference between C sharp expression trees and F sharp quotations because they're essentially doing the same things but for the different languages and there are pros and cons to, to using each, each particular one. So C sharp expression trees have a few limitations. They, they don't support the full C sharp language. Things like async and the null coalescent operators are not available for uh, C sharp expression trees. And within C sharp to actually traverse and use the expression trees, you have to use node visitor patterns. So they're a bit more complex to use compared to a language with algebraic data types and pattern matching like F sharp, for example, that tends to be a lot easier to use. F sharp on the other hand has a couple of other similar limitations. It doesn't represent the full language, things like object expressions and uh, variables that escape in the scope of quotations are not available. So I thought we'd use some examples of using quotations and expression trees for a reflection to try and use those as a, a more type safe version of reflections. Let's look at those. I'll start off with a simple class that we can wrap using reflection. Now we can create a method which we can return a property from an expression. The expression is passed in and we grab the expression's body to define whether it's a member expression or whether it's a unique expression. If it's not, then we throw an exception. Otherwise, we extract the name of the type and then we also return the name of the member. We can now use console write line and we can use our property name function to pass in a lambda expression, which is x lambda x dot bar, which is the property of the type we defined earlier. Now we can hit run to see what happens. You can see here that we've successfully extracted the type and the name of the property. Now we can add a similar method to extract the type name and member name from a function. We do this by passing in an expression, which is a constant expression. We then extract the body as a constant expression and then return the type's name and the constant value turned to a string. As before, we throw an exception if the constant is null. As before, we can use console write line to print out the passed in expression. We use the name of operator to actually pass in a constant expression. This allows the function to work properly. Now we can run debug again to make sure this works properly. You can see here that we've got the property name and the member name and they're both correct. Now we switch to F sharp to do exactly the same thing. First of all, we define a record type called foo with a, a function called buzz. This is essentially exactly the same as the C sharp version. So we start out by creating a type extension. We're going to use a static member because we are going to use the reflected definition attribute. This allows us to use an implicitly quoted quotation rather than actually having to enclose the quotation in the quotation literals. When I use pattern matching over the expression to match on a Lambda expression with a property gate inside it. And if that is matched, then we return sum with the type's name and the property's name. As with the C-sharp example, we just print this out to the console. We pass in a lambda expression. We don't have to enclose this with quotation literals because of that reflected definition attribute. And you can see we've got our type name and the property name. Now we move on to doing a method rather than property. We start as we did before using reflected definition so that we get the auto quoting capability. This time we use the lambdas expression which allows it to match any lambda expression with any number of parameters. We print this out to the console again, but this time we use a lambda expression returning the method. If we run this now, 
So you can see there we've got the property name and the method name. One thing with link expression trees and f -sharp quotations is that you can also evaluate them. And this is a quick look at how you can do that with both c -sharp and f -sharp. So we start out by defining a standard expression, just for example here, one plus two. And for link expression trees, we have to compile these. This leaves us with a function that we can then invoke to get the result. So if we run this now to see if it works properly, and you can see here that we have our answer of three. So on f -sharp, we can actually do exactly the same. We can define a function exactly the same as the c -sharp one, and we can use something called the leaf expression converter. There's a function called quotation to lambda expression, which this allows us to reuse the, the same underlying functionality within link to do the compilation to return a delegate, which you can call to get the answer. So I've just run it here and you can see we get the same answer of three. With f -sharp, there's also alternative methods of evaluating quotations. You can use a library called unquote, which looks like this, which is a much simpler way of evaluating the expression. There's also another couple of quotation compilers and evaluators, which I'll place in the description too. If we come back to the real world usages of f -sharp quotations, one of the main usages in f -sharp quotations is in type providers. Now in type providers, quotations form the backbone of quoting fragments of different pieces of code to splice into types and methods to perform code generation kind of capability. The aim of this video is not to go too deep into that side of things. I expect this to take up an entirely separate video in the series, but here's a look at um, one of the type providers that I wrote some time ago, which turns iOS storyboards into generated codes. So let's have a quick look at how quotations are spliced together, exposing outlets and also to create a chain disposal methods. So here's the iOS designer provider, which is the root entry point for this type provider. I'm not going to go through all the details of how this works, but the gist of it is that this loads a storyboard file, which is kind of a glorified XML file, processes each element within the storyboard, which would be a scene, which is full of view controllers, which is then full of controls. And controls were exposed with something called outlets. Just where all the interesting stuff happens within this is in this section here. Each of the view controllers, which houses the controls, is calling the build controls function. Now the build controls function, which is here, I don't worry about understanding this. The scope isn't to understand. I just want to give a flavor of how quotations are used within type providers. So within build controls, we're building things like a constructor, we're also adding actions, for some of the controls, and also generating outlets. Now, outlets is just a fancy word to describe accessing a control via a property. Each outlet or control which is exposed is then processed by build outlet. And if we go to this function, we can see here that we're generating a property with a backing field and we're using details within the outlet which is passed from the XML file to generate its name. And the type is also exposed within an XML to Xamarin control name. We also add a custom attribute. One of the processes which happens within Xamarin iOS is that iOS is managed by the iOS runtime, which requires the outlets to be disposed of at a later date. We create a disposal chain here. Now this starts as generating a method called release designer outlets. So this essentially loops through each outlet which needs to be disposed of and generates a disposal expression and they all get chained together. So if we look at provided method, this takes um, a name, a type and invoke code and the invoke code is an expression. So this is the first instance in here which I'm going to show you where quotations are used. The invoke code is created by calling build release outlets expression. We pass in an instance and the fields that need to be disposed of or need to be wrapped within a compound disposal expression. So for each outlet, we then build a disposal expression and this disposal expression will then do a field get, coerce it to an object. And then this section here is the quotation that we use to actually generate the disposal expression. If the field is not null, then we take the field, cast it to iDisposable and call dispose. The beauty of this particular function is we use a MapReduce, which 
generates one of these disposal expressions for each particular outlet and after that it creates a sequential expression to um, join them all together so that when release designer outlet is called then each of the outlets is disposed in turn. So that is a really quick example of how quotations would be used inside type providers. Don't worry if you don't understand any of this, that's not the, the scope of this particular episode. I'd like to do one episode entirely on type providers at a future date if that's of interest to anyone. So if anyone would like to see this then drop me a comment below and I'll see if I can make that happen. Another viable use for F-sharp quotations is for things like converting pieces of F-sharp code into um, GPU instructions like CUDA or, or shader programming. So alia.gpu is an example of that. You can see some of the code in this example here. And finally, one of the other uses, or rather real-world uses of, of um, quotations is something that I used in one of my open source libraries that I created while I was working for Jet, which is a library called Phalanx. Quotations were used along with some of the type provider SDK to quote fragments of code, take those fragments of code and to convert them back into a, a DF sharp syntax tree and to actually generate code that was used as a, a pre-compilation step. So here we'll look at a couple of examples of how this was um, we've done with Phalanx. So here we are inside the Phalanx solution and I've gone straight into the guts of it into the serialization part of the code and we've got various things which create snippets of quotations and compose them together. So here's one such example. We've got a method called serialize property and this takes a buffer that it's going to actually serialize the property to an instance and also a property descriptor. The property descriptors are actually something which is passed from the input schema. The input schema in this case is a Google protocol buffer descriptor file. So this basically gives every property a name and a type and a position in the protocol file. So one of the interesting parts of this is that we're basically matching the property type on the import schema against a kind and a rule. And for the different types of operations, for example, if the input types a class and it's optional, we will generate a certain piece of code. And in this instance, we actually do a reflection call to the actual quotations. So the quotation itself is this piece here. And we call the quoted code, which in this case is right optional embedded. And we've got these three X's here. And this particular function call static generic takes the type that the static generic function's generic parameter is. So in this case, it's the underlying type of the property type. And it takes three parameters, position, buffer, and value. And in the quotation here, we've got three X's, which marks the splice points. And when call static generic is called, it injects the underlying type with reflection and passes position, buffer, and value. And what we get back as part of this match is an expression, a, a quotation, which is right optional embedded with the three properties. So these are basically combined for each different property and we end up with a complete expression tree which describes a certain file. And we then proceed to convert those particular quotations back into an F-sharp abstract syntax tree. So here I've moved to the quotation to AST file, which actually converts the quotation back into an F-sharp abstract syntax tree. What you'll notice from here is the main function is a static member called to AST and it takes the expression and it also has some optional parameters, emit closing type and a list of namespaces. So the gist of this is that we take the expression and then for each type of expression, for example, value, a var, derived patterns, lambdas, let recursive, every single type of quotation node is covered here and it's converted into the equivalent syntax expression in the F-sharp abstract syntax tree. So you can see here, there are tons and tons of them. These are quite fiddly to get right. Don't worry about understanding any of this. I just wanted to give a brief insight into ways that you can use quotations to actually do metaprogramming. So this, as I said, is part of Phalanx and in a future episode we can cover this in depth and go through some of all this stuff because it can get really interesting, really fiddly and really mind-bending. 
So if you made it this far, then why not subscribe to my channel? It helps the channel grow and uh, I really appreciate any new subscribers that I get. Also, if you have any comments about metaprogramming in general or this video, then please leave them in the comments below because um, I'd really like to get your input for future videos, uh, not just F Sharp, other languages, because we're going to explore those as well. Um, also, would like to thank all of my patrons. Um, I really appreciate your support. If anybody else would like to pledge to my patron to support this channel, then you can do so by checking out the link in the description. While you're here, smash the like button as hard as you possibly can, and I will see you next time.